On the phone, Peter Galeska. He is the contributing editor of Style Weekly in Richmond, Virginia, and he is part of the Washington Post local um, uh, blog network. Uh, Peter, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, Peter, I mean, give us a sense. Uh, did you did you see this uh, this coming that uh, David Bratt would 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 take down uh, Eric Cantor, which is, you know, uh, uh, unprecedented really for a um, for a majority leader of the House to lose in a primary. Uh, no, I didn't. I don't think many people did. Uh, people knew that David Bratt was, was mounting a, a very interesting and strong um, uh, campaign, sort of an insurgent effort. But um, I don't think anyone expected uh, not only a win, but a win this big. So give me your sense of, of well, first off, this is what it fascinates me. Where did these other 17,000 voters come from that didn't show up for the presidential uh, 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 on-year primary uh, but did for for this one. I mean, wh- who do you think those voters are? Well, I think the the Cantor camp came out immediately and said, you know, in Virginia, you don't have to you know vote by party in a primary. You can you just vote. You're in a district. You vote. And Cantor's people claim that a lot of Democrats are crossing over and just deliberately you know voting for for Brat. The Washington Post came out a story this morning that pretty much took that apart. However, I think I think what what has been missed here by people like me, journalists. Um, and others is that there is a there was a, a lot more resentment against Cantor than um, anyone realized, and a lot of it was led by the Tea Party. Of course, the Tea Party is a fairly uh, disparate group, and um, but a lot of people were just resented the same old same old. They resented, you know, him being a big spender when he says he's not. They resented the you know, the roadblocks in Congress, and and just just the whole game in Washington. And so, and, and give me a sense of like you know. Um... Uh, of how this message got out. I mean, there, there's, you know, people like um, uh, Laura Ingram and uh, Mark Levin, these uh, uh, right-wing talk show hosts, they're claiming, uh, obviously, uh, that they had a big impact. I mean, did they? I, I mean, uh, do they have a uh, an affiliate? Are they particularly popular there? I mean, is, is, is was that um, what drove people out? I don't think so. Specific. I think it helped him. It helped Brad a lot, but I don't think that was a, you know, the tipping point at all. Because I mean, you can listen to any number of right-wing uh, commentators like Rush Limbaugh, whatever. I think what happened, what really, I think it's partly an uh, unforced error on the part of Canner, because Canner ran some spectacularly negative and false ads against Brad, uh, claiming he was a quote liberal college professor unquote. Um, which would offend me, but I mean, anyway, but I'm just saying is that it was wrong because he's not. I mean, he's, he's a pretty much of a libertarian free market guy, and that's easily documented. And um, you, you just don't want to be referred to as a, as a college professor. Well, no, I think it's the liberal part. I mean, he was trying, Canner was trying to claim that because uh, some years ago that um, Bratt was a, um economic advisor to Democratic Governor Tim Kaine, um, and also was for Republican Governor Bob McDonnell, that somehow the Kane part became made him a quote liberal, which is a fighting word in some places here. Yes, and um, you know that's uh, that turned out to be totally false, and I think people realize that. How? How? I mean, you know, did was did did Brat have um, ads up? Uh, I mean, you know, he's, he did too, and they encountered it, and and of course it was it was the the account was rebuffed in, in local media uh, after a while. But, um, you know, I, I just think that there's, there, there's another point that I think we need to make here, too, right. is that Canner lost touch with his constituents. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the, uh, the sort of the, the, the main driver here, is that this was a guy who, uh, I, he had, t- he took 233 flights on Delta <laughs> over the past, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was, year in his uh, filings. How far away is Washington from uh, his district by car? About 90 miles. Yeah, that would be a weird flight to take, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know. Well, I think what's happened is there's several uh, dynamics here locally that I think hurt Canner a lot. One was he became, you know, as he became House Majority Leader, he became more distanced and estranged from his constituents. That was one, one issue. Another issue, there are stories about him. I mean, he, he would always show up at his local offices here, with bodyguards and black suburban SUVs, and there's just stories about how they people would just kind of shove people would be shoved out of the way, they would park wherever they wanted to, 
and Canner just seemed more like the Imperial Washington. And that, that story got around. Now, uh, so now, what can you tell me about Jack uh, Trammell? Um, he is a professor at the same uh, college as uh, David Bratt. Um, right. Is, is this going to be a race between two liberal college professors? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think so. I think you might be able to say that Trammell is probably more progressive than Brad, but Brad is, is actually quite conservative. And it's, he's, I think, Trammell, if I, I don't know much about him, frankly, but he's a, he's a sociology instructor and has written a number of books at um, Randolph-Macon. And, of course, Brad is the chair of the economics and business department at Randolph-Macon and is well known for you know, liking people like Rand, Hayek, people like that. And so, yeah, it's going to be interesting, although I, I wouldn't think that Trammell would have a prayer of winning in this district. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a heavily Republican district. I mean, uh, Cantor himself sort of redrew the lines, ostensibly, I guess, to protect him from a Democratic challenge, uh, maybe never anticipating a Republican challenge that would work. I think that's about right. And, uh, you know, but another thing, and I think another point here is it's very Richmond in a sense, because the, if you look at the numbers, the people who really turned were from the wealthy, mostly white suburban areas like Henrico, Chesterfield, and Hanover counties around Richmond. And, um, you know, there just sort of seems to be this thing where the old Richmond order, you know, Canada was actually a product of the Richmond business establishment, very well-respected family in real estate. And he was Tom Bliley, a former Republican congressman's protege. And, um, you know, Bliley was his mentor and set him up. And I think over time that is changing. People are getting tired of being, like the local paper, the Richmond Times-Dispatch, was always promoting Canner. At one point, its former company, Media General, had his wife, Canner's wife, Diane, on its board, which raised a lot of eyebrows, too. Canner could do no wrong. And eventually people get tired of that. And they also got tired of Cantor claiming that he is a, a budget hawk when he voted for just about every budget-busting bill George Bush could come up with. And, and, but I guess it, 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 I mean, that's six years later, right? I mean, uh, yeah. he, he pays the price. Uh, do, let me ask you this. Um, uh, today, apparently, David Bratt was on uh, MSNBC and announced that he didn't, hadn't crafted a position on the minimum wage. And a lot of people hmm. are raising their eyebrows because here's, like you say, the chair of an economics department doesn't have a um, a position on the minimum wage. I mean, what is hmm. this guy ready for prime time? I mean, do you, well, let me ask you this. Do you believe that? <laughs> uh, no, I don't believe it, number one. And number two, but I'll tell you one thing that did that I, I have blogged about that, that I've been critical of some of Brad's uh, writings in that, of course, he is uh, he really nailed Canner. Uh, on amnesty for undocumented uh, immigrants. And I applaud Canna for trying to get some kind of resolution on that. And, and Brad was playing kind of a really hardball, uh, anti-immigrant, nativist kind of thing. And Brad was claiming that, um, you know, these immigrants, read Hispanics, uh, are taking jobs away from Americans. Well, if you know the district, you know that's kind of nonsense, which is basically a lot of rural areas, uh, north and west of Richmond and the wealthy suburbs. So it's kind of silly. Now, so let me ask you this. My understanding is that the the polling that's been done in that district show there's about 70 to 75 percent um, um, favorable for immigration, some type of comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that um, that Brat is, uh, is vulnerable in that position? I mean, he's taken, like you say, a uh, a pretty nativist stance on this. Uh, do you think that uh, this is something where Trammell may start to hit him a little bit? Well, I think so. I think that um, this this whole bringing up the the amnesty thing um, after so many years. You know, I thought we'd been through this before. You know, uh, that this is giving the Democrats uh, a new opportunity. It will push back uh, any kind of congressional resolution. I think I'm not a Washington expert or anything, but you know, on on the immigration issue. But I do think this does get, does give Democrats and people like Trammell a ready issue. Because you're right. I think a lot of people say, no, wait a minute, we need to resolve this in some compassionate and reasonable way, you know? Well, it's, uh, it's fascinating stuff, and I appreciate your, your coming on and, um, and giving us a, a local uh, perspective on this, because I think uh, there's a lot of people outside of, um, outside of that district who are trying to figure this out. And it is, um, it is uh, um, you know, just, I think, stunning for a lot of people. It certainly is. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Peter.